Signs of apostasy. What does apostasy mean? It means a falling away. A falling away from one's professed beliefs, meaning Christians turning from Christ to an imposter. We were sent many signs concerning the events that would come, that would uh, um, bring into being that thing that would consummate the appearance, if you would, even of this false one. We were given many signs as to what you should look for, what to expect, and what your frame of mind and spirit should be. So open your Bibles, if you would, to 2 Timothy chapter 3, and we're going to take um, Paul's writings to Timothy, his instructions to him, which in a sense are instructions to you on how you should think, what you should look for, and in a sense, how you should conduct, if you would, even yourselves in times of trial, which is very, very helpful. Second Timothy chapter 3, we're going to begin with verse 1. We do ask our Father for a word of wisdom in Jesus' name. Chapter 3, Second Timothy, and it reads, This no also. In other words, this kind of in the Greek means face the facts. Don't play games. This is it. This know also that in the last days, perilous times shall come. They're go- they're troubled times are going to come. You can count on it. So many people would seem to try to leave the impression that if you accept Jesus, there'll never be any troubles. That's false teaching. The conflict between Satan and Christ will continue until Satan goes into the pit. And naturally, if you follow Christ, Satan's going to be thumping on you occasionally if you allow it. So what he's kind of saying is just put it in your book and know it. This is going to happen. Some people, if you were to um, probably enhance this a little bit, you would recognize it as the troubles of Jacob. Jacob being the father of the natural tribes and meaning the natural children around the world. You're going to have it. It's going to happen as long as Satan is on the loose, if you're not sharp, are you? That's the question. Verse 2, For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemous, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy. That means unholy uh, Kadesh, they're certainly not for Christ. They don't have time for Christ in their lives to speak of. They look for their pleasures elsewhere other than serving God. Now, it is amazing that when you look around yourself for these signs, do you see any of this? Do you see even so-called would-be pastors, maybe Uh, This is so-and-so's ministry. Well, it really should be Christ's ministry, all right? Man should stay out of the way and let Christ operate. And not that anyone's going to be condemned or anything for that, but it kind of shows you where a man's mind is. Does it not where a man's um, feelings are as far as serving Christ and knowing that Christ is the head of the church, all right? Now, Verse uh, 3, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontent, incontent, that's which is to say uh, without self-control, don't don't practice self-control, just hey, whatever, furious, furious, despisers of those that are good. And they do. They do despise those that would do right. Let's, let's take the natural affection, without natural affection. Uh, this means in the sense that the natural kinship of your own family is not there. That they begin to turn brother against brother as Cain turned against Abel. And it comes from the prime in the Greek, the word kin. Your kinship. You know, you have a blood truce in a family. 
your brothers and sisters by blood. And family is important. That contract is there. And let me tell you something. I know sometimes we get bad blood involved. By that I mean hard feelings and so forth. But no one will ever stay with you aside from God himself through the Son as well as family will. Why? They care. You're a part of that family. But it would seem that just before the apostasy, that that natural tie, that kinship, where family is supposed to love and respect family falls apart. I don't, I don't know. Are you analyzing? Are you looking around the world today? Do you see any of this? Truce breakers, that means they'll make vows to each other and then break them. You know, a man is as good as his word. So that make, gives us a lot of worthless people, doesn't it, in certain degrees. I mean, let's face it. These are the facts. That's what the first very thought in this chapter stated. These are the facts. Look for them. Look for those truce breakers. Look at the family problems. Look how people uh, operate when they leave Christ out of the church, out of their head. That is to say, as the head of that church, as the head of their family. They turn on each other. Children kill children. And hey, we're just getting started, friend. You better be alert, and you better be watching. God has warned you. These are the things, these are the events that would transpire. Verse 4, traitors, heady, high-minded, that means puffed up, won't listen to anyone, know it all already. Lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. In other words, they let their own pleasures take the place of God. That is their religion. Their religion is getting what they want to get out of life and leaving God totally out of it. And this shows total, complete ignorance. Because a wise person in the Word of God knows that all gifts come from God in the first place. About the time you think you're going to get what you think you're going to get. God's going to put holes in your bucket. The whole thing is going to drain right out the bottom and you're back to square one, if not lower. You can't be successful with peace of mind by leaving God, our Father, who created all things, who owns all things, who basically controls all things. And He gives to those that love Him and that work for it. No free rides aside from salvation, my friend. That's just the way it is. You know, and you'll run across people who say, I just can't seem to get ahead. Well, you know, you, it helps to draw a paycheck. It makes it real easy to get ahead if you kind of plan a little bit. Stay within your budget. Don't, don't get into, don't get wrapped up. This Bible says usury is bad. Don't borrow money you don't need or you'll end up in trouble. Well, look at people today. They get so far under that they're paying the user people more than they are the goods they purchase. Just thought I would throw that in. What are the signs? He said it would be that way. Look around you. My friend, it's happening. And you want to be very careful that you stay spotless as nearly as possible. Hey, let me tell you something. A man is as good as his word, but also if you can't afford it, you don't need it. That is to say, unless it has to do with your profession or you're getting yourself to work or your home or something of that nature. That you do need. Okay. Um, you know, it comes down to this. Be good to yourself. And the way you be good to yourself is to love God and receive his gifts. Otherwise, you're going to have a gourd-thumping old life, I can tell you that for sure. Verse 5, having a farm of godliness, I mean, they look like they're serving God. They call themselves Christians even, but denying the proof, the power rather thereof. They say, God can't do nothing. Hey, I'll be a Christian, but God's not going to help me. Well, he will if you help yourself. He certainly will. 
He'll seal up the holes in your buckets and you'll begin to make progress. Continuing that verse. From such, turn away. What did God tell you? Pull away from people like that. If you see a bunch of Christians that deny the virgin birth or deny that God is in control or deny that God can bless you, that He can make your life better, you're wasting your time there. God doesn't like it. Do you know what they're calling God? A do-nothing. Do you think your Heavenly Father who created all things, if you call Him a do-nothing, is going to do something for you? I think not. You've got to think. And think for yourself. And practice that. Friend, these are the facts of the apostasy. That means the very end, in the end times. You're in that generation. So there shouldn't be any surprises for you. Why? You've got the word. You have the warning. God sent these set of instructions for you to see the plan of the day so that you can be a winner. You can get ahead of the game by thinking and allowing him to guide you. Because all things shall come to pass exactly as they're written. I don't know, have you read it? Verse 6, for of this sort are they which creep into houses. That's to say those that are insensitive to truth. They slip into churches and lead captive silly women laden with sins, led away with diverse lust, with wrong teachings, shortcuts, quick trips, hang on to your Betty by blanky blanky. That's a blanket, all right. Not a blankety blank. (laughs) Hang on to your little blankie and you're going to fly out of here. It's false teaching. And it leads people captive. That goes for both men and women, frankly. That's only a figure of speech. Unfortunately, women get a bad rap in that, but I I know men that can be, I've seen that men usually can be led away easier than women in many cases. They sure like to puff up. I'll be macho. (laughs) Yeah, I'll be macho and lead my family. Don't know nothing about the Bible, but I'm the head. Well, Christ is, all right? And you should prepare yourself mentally whereby you can advise the family, or be that as it may, okay? But the, the idea is they creep in, meaning what? They're not going to advertise the fact that they are a little loose when it comes to studying God's Word. They're not going to advertise the fact or wear a placard that says, I know about John 3.16, that's about it. It's about all I know about it, but I'll help you all you need help. That won't cut it, friend. That won't cut it. Verse 7. Ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Ever learning and what? Traditions of men ways of the world, how to do your brother before he does you, this sort of thing. It's all they ever have room for to get in their mind. How can I get ahead of this rap without even consulting God? You know, Israel lost every war they fought that they didn't consult with God first, asking how to do it. I don't know, how do you do? Do you ask God about moves you make in your family when you're ready to change professions? That's a benchmark in life a move or something of that nature. Do you ask God's guidance in it? You should. If you don't, you're going to be a wayward soul. You need to consult with Him. Seven. I'm sorry, we had that. That's just the way it is. Ever learning, just study, study the traditions. Well, the traditions will never get you to the root of God's truth. This word will. Study it for yourself. Think for yourself. Don't get involved in cults that do your thinking for you or tell you how you must believe. You believe the way you want to believe as you discern from God's Word because you're the one that's going to stand before God and He's going to judge you by what you believe, not what some preacher believes or told you. God Himself told you through the Word. Verse 8. Now as Janus... In Jambres withstood um, Moses, so do these also resist the truth. Men of corrupt minds 
reprobate, that means worthless, absolutely not a worthless concerning the faith. In other words, you're going to be you're going to learn about as much about God's word if you went out to uh, uh, and enjoyed a good ball game and didn't think about God. You'd be more ahead than you would listening to a bunch of yo-yos like that. Now, let's let's analyze this a little bit. God gives you the word to rightly divide. What does Janus mean in the Greek tongue or the Hebrew tongue, I should say? It means full favor. So very positive, yes. What does jambres mean? It means just the opposite. It means opposer. Now here you got two clowns standing here leading. One of them is titled full of favor and the other one is opposer. Now what kind of a situation does that leave you within when they're buddy-buddy? Confusion. That's the mark of Babylon. Even their very names, and that's why they're utilized here from history, is that one's going to say it's full of favor, but the opposer's opposing Christ. What did they do? Isn't it important to you? They were given Christ. Through Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 10, these things happened as in samples so you would know what would befall you, so you better know what these two characters did. That's why he brought it up. He wants you to know exactly what they did. So whereby you can look at it, analyze it, and see what? See that it doesn't happen to you. See that you have that knowledge locked away. Well, where are we going to learn about Jan Janus and Jambres? In Exodus chapter 7, all right? Exodus, turn there with me. Hold your place, but turn to Exodus chapter 7. When he brings these up, he means for you to take a look at it. It's a teaching, and it's something you should absorb. What did they do? Verse 7, and let's begin with this. Pick the dudes up in verse 9. When Pharaoh, we'll ta I'll take it with 8 while you're turning. And the Lord spake unto Moses and unto Aaron, saying, verse 9, when Pharaoh shall speak unto you, saying, Show a miracle for you. Then thou shalt say unto Aaron, Take thy rod, and cast it before Pharaoh, and it shall become a serpent. Now did God let them guess with this? No, he told them beforehand. That's what the word is for, is to tell you beforehand about the apostasy. What's going to happen to you if you study the word, if you come to knowledge. Verse 10, in Exodus chapter 7. And Moses and Aaron went in unto Pharaoh, and they did so as the Lord had commanded. And Aaron cast down his rod, staff, that is, before Pharaoh and before his servants, and it became a serpent. Now, first of all, you clear your mind a little bit. Always, what does a serpent represent? It's one of Satan's names, Right? So you better know this is kind of a lesson leading toward him because it has to do with serpents, all right? 11, then Pharaoh also called the wise men and the sorcerers and the magicians of Egypt. They also did in like manner with their enchantments. Now this is where Janus and Jambres come in. They were Those two were among these, all right? What did they do? 12, for they cast down every man his rod, and they became serpents, but Aaron's rod swallowed up their rods. Meaning what? God's staff overcomes Satan or anything he's got to throw at you. That'd be a little frightening, would it not? And it would be so very, very easy to say, well, what in the world has that got to do with us? Why would Paul, in writing Timothy, who he was training as a teacher, who he would even say, I'm kind of going to count on you because it's about time for me to meet the maker, okay? I'm going to leave the ministry in your hands. Why would he bring up these two yo-yos saying, you know, it's going to be just like this for you, just the way Janus and um, Jambres stood against Moses, well, you want to sharpen up a little bit, friend. You know, that was quite a miracle. 
Right? I mean, if God told you to throw your staff down there and you're a bunch of witchcraft workers come over and do the same thing, I'd leave you hanging a little loose, wouldn't it? Now, I'm going to give you a little clue here before we get into this. Satan's going to perform some miracles here before too long. I don't know. How salty are you? Have you thought on what happened here so that you can be spiritually prepared a little bit whereby you can withstand a few shady deals by the serpent, the old devil, Satan? For Christ warned in Mark chapter 13, he said, if I had not shortened the days, there would be no flesh saved. That's how good he is in his miracles that he performs in the sight of people. He said, you better go back and take a look just as those snakes could have shaken up Moses and Aaron, but what did God do? God caused the staff of God to swallow all that was negative. Just like that. Can you come to that confidence? Can you know that whatever God does and whatever Satan does to you, God can take care of it as long as you stand in him? I mean, he can make mincemeat out of anything that comes against you. Satan is a, he's a dead person, but he can sure make things look good. That's what this is about. Are you prepared mentally to withstand the miracles that Satan's going to cast, trying to document that he is pretty boy, that he is Jesus, that he came here to save the world. He's going to pay off everyone's debts. Well, how can you say that? Because... Daniel declares he comes in prosperously and peacefully. That means for everybody. Oh, it's going to be so easy for a non-believer to get in his camp. This is the best thing that ever happened to me. Forgiver of all that. If I just follow him and worship him. There's nothing new about that except ignorance. And there's sure not much new about ignorance, is there? God's staff defeated the serpents there. <clears throat> but what has that got to do with you today? Turn to Revelation chapter 13 that has not come to pass yet. What you've got to look down the road and prepare yourself for. This is why God would bring Janus and Janus and, and uh, Jambres into this. Revelation chapter 13. In Revelation chapter 13, in the beginning of the chapter, a one-world political system rose from the people. They allowed it to come into power. And then immediately after that, to heal a deadly wound it will receive, comes the false Messiah that brings to pass the apostasy. And that's why it's important to you. Pick it up, if you would, in verse um, 11 in chapter 13, the great book of Revelation. Which What does Revelation mean? It means to unveil or to uncover truth whereby you can understand it. It reads as this, 11. And I beheld another beast, this being a religious one, the false Christ, coming up from the earth, out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb. He looked like Jesus, looked like the lamb slain, and he spake as a dragon. Why he was the dragon? One of Satan's names, that's all it is. Don't make any more. What's he going to do? Now, remember the serpents. Remember the staff. Remember what Paul taught. It's going to be just like it was with Janus and Jambres. Twelve. And he exercised all the power of the first, that's to say the political, before him, and causes the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the political system he'll bring into being. Pay off all your bills, take care of you, be big daddy. Whose deadly wound was healed, that means he naturally, when you do things like that, you're going to heal the anxieties of the people. If they're ignorant of God's word, 13. Listen carefully. And he doeth great wonders, so that he maketh fire, that's foss, come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. You know what this is? He snaps his fingers and lightning charges to the earth in front of man. How many followers do you think you could get in today's crowd if you just had that one little trick alone in your bag? And he's going to do it. Not maybe, not perhaps. These are the facts. 
He's going to do it. What is your mind going to do when you see that? It said in the sight of men, you're a person. It's going to be pretty convincing. You know, a rock star can make people go nuts today, if, you know, under the right conditions and everything. Now, this is only the beginning of his bag of tricks, and I think you can better understand why Jesus would say, if I not, had I not shortened the time, no flesh would be saved. I mean, he's a convincer. He has power, and don't you ever underestimate him. But always remember, you have power even over him. He can't bother you. All that does is play with your mind if you let it. Now, let's read on there. What does he do then? 14. And he deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles, witchcrafts, funny tricks, serpents. I'm not saying he's going to use that, but that's what, that was an example which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast which had the wound by the sword and did live. In other words, you worship that thing, I brought it to life. I'm power, I can make it lightning, I can pay off your debts, I can control people. Love me. I've come to bring peace to the world. I don't know. Those are signs of the apostasy when it arrives. What are you going to do? Well, you've been forewarned. You've been told beforehand. By who? By the word of God. Signs of the apostasy. Is there another place? Of course there is. Go back to our place in Timothy and turn to the book to Thessalonians just before that. Second Thessalonians. Where you, which all of you are familiar with, or you should be, where the false Christ sits in the holy place claiming to be Jesus. He didn't say maybe it would happen, it would. He says Christ will not, the true Christ will not return to this earth. This is to say in verse 1 of chapter 2, 2 Thessalonians, until after, uh, well, let's read it in, uh, in uh, verse 4. The son of perdition, that's the chief of apostasy. Perdition is the polyae from which apostasy comes. Who opposeth, verse 4, and exalteth himself above all that is called God or is worshipped, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. It will happen in Jerusalem. And they're going to think that Christ is returned. Now, drop down to verse 9 now. That's why we came here. Remember Janus and Jambres. He said, you're going to see an example of that. Here it is, verse 9. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan, that's to say his role of the Antichrist, with all power and signs and lying wonders. My friend, they're going to be good. By good, I mean deceptive. That power is going to show and it's going to make hearts tremble. 10, and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, that's perdition, that follow him, because they received not the love of the truth that they might be saved. They wouldn't listen to the true word of God. They listened to traditions who led them into the flyaway with Satan. 11, and for this cause God shall send I want you to make a note of who's doing this. God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. God will allow it. God will cause it to come to pass. If they want to play games, if they want to believe in the enemy, God will help them greatly by allowing him to perform more miracles than ever. It's going to get pretty salty, friend. I don't know how salty are you. We're not playing church in this generation. Christianity is a reality. It is life. And you have been sent the plan of the day on what it is that you're to do. Will you stand up for your people or are you going to be a powder puff and float along with the, the nice guys or whatever? Okay? I don't know. What kind of person are you? Are you a strong Christian or not? Are you a Christian that truly wants to serve God or do you just like to play church? a little late to play church. You better be the Christian that follows God by his word. 
<clears throat> so that's, excuse me, that's why he brings Janus, Janus and Jambres into this. What did their word names mean again? Full of favor. I'll do anything for you. You're just, you know, I'll do you any kind of favor you want. And the other is the opposer, meaning opposing everything that Christ has said and putting signs and miracles behind it to make believers. Listen, if a person hasn't listened to the prophets that foretold of these things, if they wait till that moment to get religion, I, I'll use that term, that quote, you know what kind of religion they're going to get because he puts on a good show. Very good show. If you go back to the little old show that was put on as the type, and that's for Aaron, to cast down that staff of God and it turned into a snake and then see those bunch of yo-yos, clowns come over and do the same thing and you got a little old wiggly worm snakes going everywhere. I mean, that's awesome, right? It would be. Let's face it. Well, what God is preparing you for through that type is to know God takes care of his own problems and he will take care of them. And... Um, I don't know. I guess it comes down to do you believe the word or are you going to believe your eyes because this is Satan's going to do these things in the sight for a fact before people. How do I know that? The word states it, declares it. I know it shall happen. So do you. Okay, let's return then if we may to complete in 2 Timothy chapter 3, signs of the apostasy. Let's see what else is left for us here to, to grow by. Verse 9 of 3rd chapter, 2 Timothy. But they shall proceed no further, for their folly shall be manifest unto all men as theirs also was. As it was with Moses, as the staff... Uh, took in all the other snakes, so it will be with you. Anything that comes against you will not prosper at that time. Remember it. I don't care how, what kind of funny game Satan wishes to play. You don't have to sweat it. How salty are you? Let's find out. We're going to find out before too long. And I don't, you, you don't have to be afraid. You know, say, oh, Lord, that's going to scare me. No, it won't. Not if you have faith to believe God's going to protect. Hey, you're his little child, and they better nobody play hanky with you. They better nobody touch you, or God will flatten them. Inhale them. And if you believe that, how could you possibly be afraid of a few little parlor room tricks that Satan can pull? I don't want to take away from the magnificence of his power, but it, you have power over him, so don't worry. Got it? Get fear out of your heart, because that doubts God. Ability. 10. But thou hast fully known my doctrine, manner of life, purpose, faith, long suffering, charity, and patience. Paul said, I've been shipwrecked, whipped, you know, the whole bit, and I've never weakened, I've never gave way, Timothy. You hang tough. 11. Persecutions, afflictions, which came unto me at Antioch, at Iconium, at Lystra. What uh, persecutions I endured, but out of them all the Lord delivered me. Just like Moses or Aaron's staff absorbed all of the snakes, God delivered me. Mo Paul is saying, when this little trouble comes upon you, know that God will deliver you. The same as God delivered Jonah. The same as God has always delivered his people that believe. Don't let signs and miracles shake you up on your first cruise. You were chosen for a reason because you got good stuff. So don't be afraid to let it show. Be a little salty if you must and change the flavor of things. Salt does that. Make a difference. One person can. Verse 12. Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. In other words, as long as Satan's turned loose, if you allow it, he's going to persecute you. But you've got to kick him. Take names, kick dragon. Make him pay. And pretty soon he begins to leave you alone. I don't know. It's up to you. 
it's entirely up to you as to how much of that stuff you'll take off of him. And he sure likes to try your okra sometimes. I don't like it myself. I like to take names and start kicking pretty soon with him. For there are no giants as far as we're concerned. Why? God will always deliver us. But that doesn't mean you're not going to be persecuted. So, you know, a lot of people say, well, I'd just rather not have it. Hey, come on, bring it on early in the morning before breakfast. Let's, let's take care of about two of them, you know. They want to get it on, be ready to mix it up with them. I mean, in the name of Jesus, order them out. You don't have to put up with it. That means, you know, get a little exercise every once in a while by cleansing your place. And I don't mean with a broom only. Use that broom also, but... I mean, get tough on Satan in your life because he's going to try you, all right? So it doesn't matter. Verse 13, but evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse deceiving and being deceived. They're going to do it. It's going to get worse before it gets better. I'm sure you're going to be appalled at what you hear on television if you're not already. What comes from some pulpits? I heard a preacher this morning, Martha was clicking the thing as I was passing through there, and he said, it says right there, God brings the sin of the Father on the children, even to the fourth generation that hate them. And if we were to say, I think he came out, that means if a man commits adultery, his family will pay for it for 160 years. Now that is so full of, that is malarkey, false teaching. Isn't it amazing that people can't read anymore? The subject was, the sin stays for those who hate God. Generations had nothing to do with it. That's true if it had gone on for a hundred generations. Apparently, he's never read the book of Jeremiah, whereby it stipulates in um, chapter 29, verse 31, that if the father bites a sour grape, it doesn't set the child's teeth on edge, which... I might explain for someone, some preacher that hasn't, doesn't have too much Bible knowledge, that means the father's sin doesn't rub off on the child. What a kind of a God are they painting? That because a man committed adultery, he would make that family suffer for 160 years. What a bunch of nonsense. But that's what you've got coming through the tube, and they do it with such grandeur lies in any form, doesn't matter how grand they're made to sound, is a lie. Well, how do you prove it? By reading that a five-year-old child can read. Of course, he was quoting from Exodus chapter 20, verses, what is it, four and five, somewhere along there. My memory doesn't fail me, and it doesn't too often. Nonsense. You're just going to hear a lot of nonsense, and it's going to get a lot worse before it gets better. We have a loving God, and he doesn't punish children for what their parents do. He punishes the parents. All right. And so it is. 13. But he, uh, we got that, didn't we? Okay, let's go with 14. But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned. Don't you shake loose from them. You hang on to them. And has been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them. Who? The Holy Spirit through the Scripture. The Word. Don't take this man or any other man's word for something without documenting it from your Father. For your Father loves you, and your Father will always see that you have the victory, ultimately. He likes to know that you can take a little shake in. Makes him feel good when he says, that's, that's my child there. Did you see him just thump old Satan's gourd? Oh, it makes me feel good, God says, I think. He didn't tell me that. I just think that's, I think that's parent-like. You know what I mean? So did you, you see that child of mine just kick the, you know what, out of old Satan over there. It just makes me feel good all over. Yeah, he does, all right? Verse 15. And that form and that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in Jesus in Christ Jesus what saves you the whole thing is tied up right there if you'll just take a deep breath and read it again and that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures 
which are able, which are what? Which are able to make thee wise unto salvation. Do you know what salvation is? Eternal life, saved through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. In other words, it comes only through Christ Jesus. Your faith in him, in that. And I hope everybody rolled their windows up. (laughs) But there you have it. That's what salvation comes from, is from reading God's word and documenting it. I I know you probably have heard me say many times, you've known there was more to God's word that when you were a child than you've been taught. Why? It's nature. It's natural that you're drawn to your natural father, your heavenly father, that is to say, which is your closest relative. And you're drawn to that truth and that mix. And you want to know more. That's why you are driven to study. Because it prepares you and puts the armor upon you whereby you are prepared and saved, all right? Saved a lot of embarrassment. For one thing, wouldn't it, wouldn't it really be embarrassing to you to think, I'll be one of God's elect. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'll be one of them special people. Yeah. And then let Satan fool you, and you've got to say, well, I, I, I guess I don't know what I was thinking. That'd be embarrassing, would it not, to go to the Lord and say, he fooled me, even after I read the word. Well, that would be embarrassing, so don't let it happen. How can you tell? It's going to happen exactly as it's written. Verse 16, all scripture, not part of it, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine. In other words, you can rest your doctrine in it. Not men's, my friend, not traditions of men, but God's word, let that be your doctrine. For reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Now let's take them one at a time. You, from the scriptures, they're given by the inspiration of God for profitable doctrine, meaning to tell you how to live, for reproof, meaning you can tell a fake when you see him. Did you hear what I said? That's what the scripture is to reproof, is that you can spot a fake when you see one. No one can deceive you. And for correction, you know how to correct the situation. You can correct it by taking names and kicking dragon, all right? By straightening your family out with love, with understanding, with stability in Almighty God. That's what it's talking about. And for instruction in righteousness means it tells you how to do what's right. Tells you how to do what is right. Verse 17, that the man of God may be perfect, Thoroughly furnished unto all good works. This word perfect, I'm sorry, is a misnomer. No man can be perfect. It means that he can be refreshing or refreshed. That he can teach you new things from the word. Why? Because the word alleviates it, makes it clear. That it's um, not the same old thing, let's gather together and pray that we're going to fly out of here and we'll do this for 30 years. Oh, refreshing truth from the word that is timely to teach us how we should do. And thoroughly furnished means that he's always or she is always equipped to answer your questions, to take you on. Remember, Paul's writing this to Timothy, okay? Because Timothy is about to have to go into the ministry. But it applies good to lay persons as well. Because that's how you equip yourself. That you, that's why you can be refreshing, let's say, to a family that's lost a loved one because you know where they went. You know that to be absent from this body is present with the Lord. We don't put anybody out here in a hole in the ground. It's, that's just the, the flesh remains that's just going to go back to dust, but they're already with the Father. Which side of the gulf they're on, that's up to them. But we know where they are, and you're able to help because you're a refreshing influence upon them by bringing the real, true Word of God. And we're about to approach, in this generation, a time when people are going to need refreshing, and you'd better be ready. Just a couple of three verses over here in this next chapter, and I'm going to stop a little short here. Chapter 4, verse 1. I charge thee, therefore, before God, 
I mean, this, this is a charge. And the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick, that means the living and the dead, at his appearing and his kingdom. He's going to do that. To preach the word. Man's word, traditions, church doctrine. No, this word, God's word. Be instant in season, out of season. Be on duty at all times if it's required. All right, if a friend needs a smile, a lift, a advice. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long-suffering and doctrine. That means know how to do it. That's what wisdom and truth will do for you. Three, for the time will come, not maybe, the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. But after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears, teachers that will just tickle their ears, that will say what men want to say, soothsayers. You'll be okay. You do whatever you want to do. Just be sure and, and pass the plate around here a few times and we'll try to forgive your sins. Now, I'm not talking against any particular religion or anything. I'm just saying soothsayers just want your money and they'll say, you'll be all right because they're not believers themselves. Just doesn't matter to them. So when you see something like that in your life, you correct it for your family. And we're going to stop with this fourth uh, or fifth. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. They're going to be turned to lies. How many lies do you hear today, beloved? False teachings. We'll be kind, okay? About the way people are going to go back to the Lord. But watch thou in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, make full proof of thy ministry. And that's Paul's word to uh, Timothy. I think it's good advice, and I think it holds true to today. That as you see the signs of the approaching apostasy, these are charges of apostasy. These are charges meaning it's definite, it's going to happen. So you want to be set for it. You want to be well equipped. And you want to be refreshing, as forestated in the last chapter of that third verse. Refreshing to those around you. With a word that is fresh, not, not uh, mumbo-jumbo. And always remember, God in every promise places a condition. The condition is in this, that... You study his word, for from it comes all these things. But you must study it with understanding. If you don't understand it, put it aside for a moment and pray. Do you know what's going to happen? Bang! A whole paragraph will just open up in your mind by the Holy Spirit if you'll really seek and search. I, I know because this happens to me many times in studying for a sermon. even, And... and and I'm certainly no different than any of you are. The Holy Spirit will teach you if you pray for that knowledge and wisdom and pray for understanding. And know this. I think that Paul's endorsement of Timothy and his instruction gave one of the greatest compliments our Father could ever have. He's always going to give you the victory. doesn't matter that you're persecuted. He's going to let you win. Because he loves you. When you're equipped, you think about it. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you, Father, for this, the strength. And we know that our strength comes from you, Father, that gives us that ability. Be with us and be with these. Let them be a blessing to all they come in contact with. In Yeshua Jesus' precious name, amen.